Welcome, welcome, everybody. It is build day. Today, we're building a CW88 by Cruel World. This is a TKL, uh, 10 keyless keyboard. Um, and in the designer's own words, uh, it is an amalgamation of features um, of their favorite custom keyboards, namely the OTD Koala and the TGR Jane V2. Um, in my own words, I would describe this as a Jane-like keyboard, um, if we can uh, establish such a category. And I am really, really stoked uh, about this keyboard. I, I think the Jane is a beautiful keyboard. It's very nice looking. However, I've got uh, a couple personal gripes with it. Um, w WKL, Win Keyless keyboards, not for me. You know mods, you know three of them. I like them there. Um, HHKB I can get away with, because at least I'm a Mac OS user. Command and Alt are right next to each other, then controls up here. But like with WKL, when you split it in the middle, no. Also, it kind of looks like the keyboard's like missing teeth. Like, you know, when you smile when you're a little kid and you're missing a tooth. That's how when keyless keyboards look to me. So, um, Jane, nope, not gonna work there. And also, I, uh, I really don't like the whole calligraphy on the bottom of keyboards thing. The Jane, the frog, uh, no. <laughs> I don't think it looks good. Um, I have yet to see one where it looks good. If you see one, please show me. This board um, resolves both of those. Uh, mine is the CW88, so it's an 88 keyboard, which is F13 layout on uh, TKL, and has a full bottom row on it. There were a whole just crap load of options in this group by. There was the F13 88, which would come in WKL or WK. There was the 87 key, so just the F12 TKL in WKL or WK. And then there was a 60 in WKL, WK, and HHKB. So just like a silly number of um, layouts in this group by. And then they came in gray, wine, pink, and lilac, as well as a special edition by Skunk Works, which I'm kind of regretting uh, not getting, but I'm also really, really happy with how this looks. Uh, I have opened it already, which I kind of wish I hadn't, because I had like an emotional reaction seeing this keyboard for the first time. So I hope I can uh, still transmit some of that excitement to all of you watching. Um, couple last details about this keyboard. Um, five degree typing angle, so quite shallow. Um, the body's aluminum, the weight is brass, and the accent weight on the back of the board is stainless steel. That's where a little bit of that Jane-like design for me comes from, is instead of the Toblerone weight like in Jane's, this has a very outwardly similar weight, but is more of a plate style weight and is manufactured in pretty cool way, so I'm excited to <clears throat> take that out and look at it. Uh, it is a gasket mount board with injection uh, molded sock gaskets, I would call them. We'll take a look at that. It comes with 60A. Um, I got a couple other um, harnesses. <clears throat> My voice is not working, so we're gonna do the weird bit I accidentally started a couple videos ago and now can't let go of. We're gonna introduce the beverage of the of the video. <laughs> this is a nice 2023 vintage uh, Mountain Dew Spark. Um, I'm gonna hopefully fix my voice up here. So, uh, molded, again, what I would call sock gaskets. Take a closer look at them. 60A is the default. I also have 40A and 20A from the extras. So that'll be the sound tests as well as the three different gasket hardnesses. Um, uses a Heine Bush uh, H88 PCB in my case. Um, and it came with this very nice uh, carry case, microfiber cloth, really a great package. Um, so let's let's begin. Like I said, comes with the carry case, got the Cruel World logo on it, uh, a really cool uh, kind of hype beasty zip tie tag with a QR code that goes to the build guide, though right now it's just sending me directly to the normal website. Um, so don't know what to do there, but I've, I've, uh, I'll tell you a secret, I've built a keyboard or two, so I think we're gonna be okay without a, a build guide on this one, so. Really, really great looking. Big fan of keyboards that include cases. Let's dive on in to this one. I had this tucked away nicely, there we go. I did like the, uh, the kind of um, 
Virgil Abloh off-white sort of vibe of the of the red zip tag. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, so in our top pockets here, we've got this baggie, which includes some Cruel World stickers, because it's a great logo. I love that. Uh, and the daughter board is in the bag in a bag. And the PCB, which as I mentioned is a Heine Bush H88 PCB. These ones do have custom silk screening on them to match the Cruel World branding, and it is reflected on the bottom as well. Under the Heine logo, you can see that it's a, what does it exactly say again? H88 NU, oh, 1.2. Is this a 1.2 millimeter PCB? Uh, north facing for Cruel World. I need to measure this PCB. I did not notice that 1.2 before. I hope that just means version, because I do not have 1.2 millimeter stabilizers. Oh no. <laughs> the video's already gone off the rails and you haven't even seen the board yet. What a, what a catastrophe that would be. Calipers to the rescue. This looks like a 1.6. I'm betting 1.2 is an unfortunate um, version number. It's like 1.7 millimeters thick. Isn't that interesting? Okay, phew. Heart stopped for a second there. That would have been a problem. Actually, what I think I do have some 1.2U stabilizers. Anyway, I wouldn't have wanted to prep them. That would have been annoying. So, da da. There you go. 1.6, but apparently 1.7 millimeter Heine Bush um, H88 PCB with the custom Cruel World branding. Now, if you've ever seen one of Heine's PCBs before, uh, you will know that it's actually got the uh, pins for Alps switches and MX. I'm too close. There we go. Uh, Alps and MX switches. Um, so I mill maxed my PCB. Should probably should have said that up front. You can see a sampling of my soldering job there. Um, but this one was a little different. Typically, the way I do my mill max sockets is I insert them into the holes and then capped on tape them down. The alternate method of doing this is. Uh, putting them on the legs, the the uh, the contacts of the switch, and then putting the switch in the board, um, which is what I had to do this time because the Alps footprint has two holes. I could have figured out which hole that one goes into. That, that's not the problem. Man, I am just not here. Let's do one of those. There we go. Um, you've got two holes on this side, one for the MX, one for the Alps. I could have figured that out. But then this contact is actually a slot. Um, because the, the MX and Alps, uh, if I recall correctly, contacts are so close together. So I wouldn't have been able to know to date them to the top or bottom of the slot. So uh, a little bit of a different MX, uh, Milmax, MX, Milmax job this time, um, but it did go perfectly. No flooded sockets, didn't even lose any on the floor. Look at me go. So pretty great. Love that. I did uh, find a project where someone had made a hot swap version of this PCB and ordered one for overnight shipping and unfortunately didn't make it today. That's no fault of the vendor. I just didn't realize in time because I was worried uh, mill max and this wouldn't work, but it totally shook out. So that's great. And now I have a hot swap uh, PCB on the way. It'll be here uh, Monday. <laughs> All right. Oh, you know what? Actually, suspense. Hold off on that for a second. We've got some extras here, as I mentioned. So first things first, we've got our different uh, injection molded gasket socks. Um, these are the 60A, the clear ones. These are the defaults. So I have two sets of these now, which is fine, because I actually have two plates. Um, and then we've got 20 and 40. I'm betting these are the 40 and these are the 20. These feel a little bit firmer. Um, so very excited to do different sound tests with these to see how that might or might not uh, impact the sound. Shouldn't need them uh, during this video though because I'm going to build with the 60s and there's already a set of 60s on the plate. Uh, got another PCB as I almost always do. Um, so I've got another plate as well so that I can have two different builds going on. Same deal. Uh, cut open because I, uh, I tested my PCB. Always, 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 always test your PCB. Uh, my other plate, so the default is um, man after my own heart. Um, I assume a man actually designing this board. That's maybe not great of me to assume. Um, included a polycarbonate full plate as the default. Um, but I did get an aluminum half plate uh, for another 
build, which I think will be pretty fun. Um, my other half plate build in my life is a, um, a mode 65 with a carbon fiber half plate. And I quite like the harder mods around the edges um, and then the uh, bounciness of the, of the middle. And then my last extra, and continuing the Jane-like features train, it is a carbon fiber back accent piece. Um, if you've never seen a Jane or Jane-like keyboard, this will make a lot more sense once we open this guy, but a little carbon fiber accent plate. Stoked about that, I think this will be a cool look. I think it actually is like proper, like not a, uh, not, not a, a laminate, like looking at the edge, I'm, this will almost certainly not show in the camera. Well, okay, maybe I'm proven wrong. You can actually see like the layers of the laminate and, like it sounds like a proper piece of, of carbon fiber. So that's pretty cool. Stoked about that. I think it's gonna be a very handsome board. I mean, it's already a very handsome board. In my opinion, it's gonna be an even handsomer board once I'm done with it. All right, enough suspense. Look at the chassis here. Uh, wonderful branded microfiber. I think this is like one of the best things you include with the keyboard. Love that. Big fan. Ooh, look at that. This is the bottom. Love that. This is the kind of stuff that belongs on bottom weights, not calligraphy. This kind of stuff. There is some fun writing on this board, but it's on the inside and it's not in calligraphy. We'll get to that. I got the gray unit. It is hefty. Look at how nice that finish is though. So that's our, this is our accent plate right here kind of surrounding the brass weight. The brass weight goes to the inside of the keyboard. We'll see when I flip it over. And there's your stainless steel weight on the back here. The hair from the inside of the, the case, probably from the foam cutting. Get the Cruel World logo, roll small right there. I love the format and position of that. And then your seams are all on the bottom. So from the top, you get an awesome, awesome seamless construction with a really gentle undercut curve. And then just clean on the top. Just spotless. Love, 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 love this. It looks so good. The chamfer on the edge is so nice. The finish of the stainless steel with the gray looks just incredible. I am such, such a fan of this. Had I known how much I would have loved this, I probably would have gotten a 60% out of this line as well. Cause oh my goodness. And it's so, for, I was watching um, Avi's video this morning about the uh, QK80, I think, or 85, they're TKL, whatever. Um, and kind of the, the theme he ended up chasing in the video is what does premium mean? It's a hard thing to define. Um, I think it's, and he comes to the same conclusion. It has to do with intention. Part of it is certainly execution, but like clearly this was a project that was made with love and intention. Like someone really, really gave a crap about this while they were working on it. And it just, it shows in the final result. It's so, so nice. And my hands are just absolutely doing horrible things to this Anno because I got, I got warm hands and this is a cold piece of aluminum. But oh, so, so nice. So you can see around top here, F1388 key layout, um, layout key layout, oh boy. It's gonna be one of those videos <laughs> layout, um, but with the full uh, not tooth gapped bottom row. So big fan of that. Um, we will actually put this back in the case for the moment because as with all builds, um, we're gonna start with prepping our, our internals. And uh, that way it helps uh, viewer retention because now y'all don't get to see what's on the inside until we get there. It's pretty fun. Although you may have been able to see. While I'm recording these videos, I'm looking at like a screen this big that is well out of arm's reach for the top camera. And then for the B camera, I'm looking at an even smaller screen mounted on top of it, which is also out of reach completely. So, um, Maybe you already saw the text on the inside. I don't know, but we'll just keep watching the video. Like and subscribe. Shut up. Let's build a keyboard. So we're obviously going to use my very carefully 
mil-maxed PCB. We're, oh, other parts. Hang on. <laughs> uh, for switches, we're gonna use the new uh, Gatoron Unknown switches. Um, this is Gatoron's first switch where they have a dedicated um wipe mold for the stems um, um wipe is ultra high okay <laughs> ultra high um i'm gonna figure this out ultra high molecular weight polymer ether i forget it's a plastic with an incredibly low coefficient of friction that has been kind of a white whale for a long time in switches but it's been notoriously hard to mold well and so these are Gatoron's first switch where there's a dedicated mold for um white plastic because it acts differently as all thermoplastics act slightly differently from each other um factory lubed as well Gatoron's been killing the factory lube uh game and i think these have ink bottoms these were like a really really immediately um compelling switch when i heard about them yeah, so nylon top and nylon housing is my typical preferred uh, housing material. But then ink bottoms with umwipe stems, full travel, snappy 20 millimeter spring. Super, super stoked about these in, again, factory lubed. Pretty nuts combo. Um, and I think, just like, yeah, 65 cents a switch. Like, really, really good. Um, the 65 cent switch market is very saturated, but this seems like a winner. So, stoked to try it. Um, and then for stabs, we are using uh, TXAP or Rev4, whatever you want to call them, uh, stabilizers, 205G0 on the plastic interfaces and XHTBDZ on the metal and plastic interfaces. So there's our full parts list. Let's get into it. Just kidding. I do need the keyboard because I need to get the plate out of it. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> All right. I'm a professional. Well, I'm not a professional. I don't get paid to do this, but I should be better at this by now, given that uh, I do this a lot. No oh, way. Okay. God, it's beefy. I'm so excited to type on it. All right. Let me get my hex keys. Protozoa. It's like I like really like this protozoa one for building because the way it's folded out of the package makes it very convenient to like only cover part of my work surface if I need to, or to unfold it into a really big cloth. Big fan. Okay, now since there's no build guide, I'm spitballing a little bit here on how to take this apart. I think these six screws are only going to be holding on the accent plates, so we're gonna ignore them for the moment. Oh, guessed the right size though. How about that? Okay, so that's those three. And now, do I need to take out all four of these top ones? I'm gonna guess yes. Tilt this over to get the screws to fall out. Yep. Okay. A screw has fallen onto my leg, but I caught it. <laughs> all right. The four that fell out are all top screws. So I'm going to turn my little key called tray for top and bottom. It is amazing how much more useful a screw tray is as soon as you add a second compartment to it. Those might be the same screws, but I'm not sure and I don't want to guess. Okay. Yep. I did take out the correct screws. I didn't need to take out all four of those. We will uh, come back to this in just a moment. As long as we're here, this is a little silly, but absolutely one of my favorite components or uh, style choices, I suppose, of this board. The Claymore text on the weight is just hilarious. I, <laughs> I, I'm certainly not like pro-war or anything, and I think minefields are pretty insidious, but that's just funny and especially because it points towards the user too like that's i love that god this is most of the way to the board down here which i guess makes sense because the stainless steel is here and the the brass is here goodness gracious so now 
All right, you know, as long as we're here, we're taking apart the whole bottom. How does this come out? Whatever makes that come out, I haven't done it yet. We are going spelunking, friends. Where did I put my hex key? Am I losing my mind? Nope, it's under my hand. I'm a professional. Shut up. <laughs> Whoa, those are tight. Gotta use the long side of the uh, hex key. No shot those were coming out. Good, good, we like it. Yeah, there's a bunch of screws missing because the stainless steel weight is still attached and I didn't see any fasteners on the other side for the brass weight, so I think they're all hidden under this accent plate. For what it's worth, for all the commentary I've made so far about like Jane Light keyboards and stuff, I've never actually owned one. Um, I, I don't think, again, I would because of, you know, WKL, but um, I, I just, I'm aware of them. <laughs> So, if this is all very obvious to, to Jane owners, and it's painful to watch, I apologize, but uh, we're learning. That's what we do here. There we go. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Yes, a whole treasure trove of fasteners. So, you can see this is that carbon fiber plate is going to replace this. Here we go. All right, and then here's the other hidden piece of branding the Cruel World logo there. Love that, too. That's pretty sharp like that, honestly. It's too bad that that's, uh, that that's hidden, but that's, that's pretty good. Cool, and then as promised, uh, there's a pretty cool thing here about these, uh, about this back weight that I want to show. So as long as we're down here, I'm gonna leave the brass weight in. No real point in taking that out, I don't think. We can see both sides of it already. Actually, I kinda do wanna take it out and see the geometry. This was a very, very carefully machined board uh, as well. The uh, the saga of this board is quite long uh, if you were keeping up with it, but it is here and I think every moment was, was worthwhile so far. Obviously haven't typed on it yet, but if the amount of care put into the project is any indication, um, it was time well spent. Go on, last one, there you go. All right, so this is pretty cool. The initial, if I'm understanding correctly, the initial thought for this was to machine it out of a single piece. Something kind of funny happens though when you machine pieces this long and skinny as they warp um, due to heat. And this would have had to be a pretty big piece of material originally with these tabs sticking off. Um, so what DDS, the manufacturer, uh, pivoted to as a recommendation to the designer was laser welding these tabs on you can just see the seam there how cool is that what that allows you to do is to start with a piece of stock very close to the shape you want already so you need a machine just a very minimal amount off which generates less heat uh, and then you can laser weld the tabs on and then after you finish everything together it all looks like a single unique piece unless you know to look for the laser weld marks which I did because I kept up with the updates. How cool is that though? This is a very heavy piece by itself. Impressively heavy. There's a little Cruel World logo. Love that. Oh, so good. I already love this board. Y'all can, can probably hear it in my voice. Mm. Love that. All right, cool. So how are they? Oh, wow. God, how did they machine those pockets like that? This must have been a multiple operation board to, to make those pockets in there for that weight to screw in. Man. Oh, and there's a tray. I totally just glanced over that. That's a, for the daughter board cable. Wow. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. All right, let's pull this bad boy out real quick and see. Ah, almost all the same size of fastener. Although you're really not supposed to take this out, so no, no points docked. <laughs> There's no reason you'd ever be removing this unless you're nosy like me. Ooh, those ones are real tight too. This might be the most screws I've ever had in a keyboard. And this isn't even including the four that hold the daughter board in. Oh man, oh, that weighs a ton too. All right, so backside here. 
Cruel World badge sticking up just proud enough to poke through to its surface. Really nice countersunk fastener holes and then the inside of the equation here. That's so funny. I just absolutely adore that. And then you can see it's machined at an angle to match the inner angle of the uh, of the case. Cool. God, it feels really good too. These really nice chamfers on all these edges. God damn, this is nice. All right. Enough, enough deconstructing. We're here to build a keyboard. Oh, this was a fun little, uh, little field trip. As long as I'm here, I'm actually gonna put that carbon fiber plate on too. No point in uh, waiting that till the end. Oh, although actually I might need to run that daughter board cable through like right now. Um, let's put everything back on. Ugh, oh, the fit and finish is so good. I love with this keyboard. Okay, and then we have four screws for this. All right, do one end, do the other end. Probably not putting these back in nearly as tight as they shipped to me, but that's okay. Keyboards don't undergo a lot of intense vibration that would loosen fasteners, I don't think. <laughs> Can't imagine typing force <coughs> is uh, transmitting that much energy into a board. All right, um, let's see about putting that daughter board in. Um, obviously, if you were... Uh, viewing this as a build guide or anything like that, you will want to test your PCB first. I already did that before I Milmaxed it yesterday. Um, always, 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 always test your PCBs. Worst thing in the world would be finishing a board and then discovering uh, that you have a dead PCB. Completely avoidable. Completely avoid avoidable? Av avoidable, yep. Wow, boy. Really is gonna be one of those videos. It's, it's only seven this time. This isn't even that late. <laughs> Oh boy, um, <laughs> all that to say, building with a bad PCB is a completely avoidable problem. Bags are branded too, love that. Attention to detail, it's not hard. Just takes some doing. Oh, uh, the length of this daughter board cable makes sense now. When I opened this the other day, I thought it was a little, here than, uh, than I would have expected. Okay, this looks like it's gonna be a right side up mount one. Yep. Let me plug in this end. Is that long enough? Oh yeah, it is. All of a sudden the cable didn't look long enough, and yet. Trust the process, Ian. Trust the process. Okay, why aren't you? Excellent. And then I'm sure that is like just barely in frame. Because of course, there we go. Hey, all right. Well, glad I took that bottom plate off because I would have had to anyway. Okay. Now we're ready to prep the PCP. Move this out of the way. So these are the uh, gasket socks. They go over little uh, outcroppings on the uh, plate. They just slide over like that. And this is what gets pinched in the case when you close it. So there's your, your 60As by default. Um, I will also be trying the 40s and the 20s. I think 60 is probably a pretty safe bet for the default. 40 and 20 are pretty soft. We'll sit Mountain Dew. 
Ah. And on we go. All right. Stabs. Oop. Well, all right. <laughs> Jumble stab. So we are doing TXAP, as I mentioned, these are the non-long pole AP stabs. The AP stabs, I measured the stems are about half a millimeter longer than TX Rev 3 non-long pull. Um, so I imagine they'll work better with more long pull switches than, um, oh boy, Rev 3 did. Bah, Ian, come on, man. Um, but there are actually long pull variants of the APs as well, which I have to imagine are even longer were, were. Um, but we are just using normal ones today, and which is fine because the Gateron uh, Unknown switches are four millimeter travel, full, full, full travel. I don't think Gateron does a lot of long pull switches now that I think about it. I always think some other switches are long pull and they're not. Um, so, yeah, and I'm using my little uh, not so secret technique here for pressing these in using the back of a pair of tweezers or a screwdriver to get those clips in. Saves your fingies, feels much, much nicer. And get that out of the way. Um, get that out of the way. In comes the <laughs> uh, island of misfit toys. My extra little TX shims, because you get more than you need. Um, if you're not familiar with how TX stabs work, they're uh, clipping. And then you can see that one has the shim in it, that one doesn't. The shim kind of locks the clips in an open state so that your stabilizer won't work itself out over time. Um, and when you do them right, they sit nice and flush to the PCB, just like all others do but no tools, it's pretty nice. No, uh, no fiddly little, little screws to, to deal with. Oh man, I'm so excited to build this board. Been waiting for this one for a while and it just happened to come uh, on a week leading into a weekend where my schedule allowed me to uh, build it. The Gateron Unknown switches literally just came this week, I think. Real stars align type of situation. I didn't really have a plan for this build, um, and it came together quite quite nicely. Oh, I didn't tell you what keycaps we're using yet. We're gonna use um, GMK Space Cadet. I think that would look really nice with this. Pardon the interruption. I think that'd look really nice with uh, the gray of the uh, the anodization of this board. Um, I was considering waiting till I got GMK Oblivion um, version 3.1, I got the monochrome base. That's gonna be here next week. I considered waiting for that, and that might be what I use in the sound tests still. Uh, but as I was looking through my, my keycap, Space Cadet was, was speaking to me for this board. It's a, it's a classic, so. I don't think there'll be any uh, complaints there with, with Space Cadet. Although if you do have complaints, leave a comment. It helps with engagement. Yep, rad. There we go. Let's get that out of the way. Get rid of our free ninja stars that come with every set of TX stab. That actually probably really hurt. These are really sharp on the ends. Oh, not a lot of uh, mass to carry them along, so. Perhaps not. Let's test these bad boys out. I have uh, not so much as even uh, tried one of these switches. So I'm very curious to, to see. They feel very smooth. I have, uh, my initial plan for this board was actually a recommendation from the friend who gave me a, a spot in this group by, he had an extra spot. Um, he recommended with a full polycarb plate ink switches, which I hadn't just used like regular old inks in a while. 
Um, so I thought that'd be a pretty good idea, but then these showed up with ink bottoms um, and, and the umwipe stem. So I think that's pretty, pretty cool. I'm excited to give these a drive. Uh, and then I am, as usual, going to scavenge keycaps off my workshop keyboard for testing the stabs. My poor, poor LCK75 gets its modifiers ripped off like once or twice a month. Oh, but it doesn't have a right shift because it's a 75. I always forget that. Or it doesn't have a stabilized right shift. It does have a right shift, just not the one I need for testing. happy with all of those of course one is going to start ticking the moment I have the board completely assembled this is the way um, but uh, I am happy with those as they lie at the moment I have absolutely no impression of those switches <laughs> because this is not a helpful scenario to test switches in um, but I they don't scratch so the umwipe slash factory lube is working god that switch is tight in there yeah, my beaties out on my finger. Classic. Every time. All right. Plug my board back in here. Let's get these out of the way. I need these for the moment. Okay, what's next? Putting in switches. Cool. So we're going to grab some plate forks here. Always good with soft plates. And if you've been on the channel here for a while, you know what happens next. Let me put switches into each corner of the plates, like so. We get our first switches aligned. Come on, Ian. There we go. Switch one. Switch two. Excellent. So what doing that accomplishes um, is it locks the PCB, so the, these switches force it to be positioned correctly, and also it won't wiggle. Some people, um, their inclination is to like put a switch in and then kind of work their way down. If you only have one switch in, the plate can kind of twist a little bit. And I mean, it still could, for that matter, with two in here, with how soft polycarbonate is. But uh, in general, um, this, this locks the plate into the correct orientation for uh, for assembly. Oops. God, I'm all over the place today. What absolute chaos. All right. I'm going to uh, snap some switches in. See you on the other side. to plug this into the uh, daughter board and test it before I finish assembly. Although actually, that's right now. Okay, this always goes faster than I remember. Every time I like sit down to do a build, I'm like, all right, buckling up for like watching Lord of the Rings Extended Editions. Like 90 minutes later, I'm done. It's like, oh, well, all right, it was more of a, I can't think of a metaphor or a joke right now. Anyway, here we are. Let's test again. Uh, nope, not gonna plug in yet. Oh, I should put these socks on though, because they will add a bit of height, and I don't want to short this out on the inside of the aluminum case. That would be bad. 
Oh, interesting. No tab near the space bar here either. Maybe I'm weird for liking that. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, okay, which side are the pins on? Ooh, this is a short leash, actually. Hmm. I have yet to nail the technique for this. Yeah. It always works out, but... Eh. It never feels as elegant as I want it to. Okay. Well, that... <laughs> We're almost done building it. Okay. All right. Again, it sneaks up on me every time. Let's crack open Via here. And let Via sing us the song of its people. Searching for device. Why? Oh, a warning. Oh, it is mad. I think how quickly I disconnected my LCK while I was in the midst of loading it, perhaps. No. Via, why? I just flashed this uh, yesterday. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> Good enough. Key tester. Sounds on. Ob. Oop, got all tripped up there. Okay. All right, and because I mapped these to the media control keys, they freaked out YouTube when I pressed them. Sorry. Uh, we're good. Hooray. Didn't crush any. Uh, okay. All right, Tom Scott. Let's relax. All right. That's on me. Okay. Cool. We are all tested up. Um, okay. Let me think here. Um, I th think I probably screw on the top case. No. Yeah, because then I can flip it over and put on the carbon fiber bottom and then put on keycaps. Yeah, rad. Okay. Let me grab the top. It goes. Oh, and I'll actually show you here. There's these little pockets here, and that's where the other side of those gaskets rest. Up here in the case. Not much to report up here. I mean, the, the, the finishing and machining are fantastic as the rest of the board is, but all the interest is really on the bottom of this board, um, which I am all about. It's funny looking at this gray. It's almost like um, the Mode 80 is one of my all-time favorite keyboards. And I have the first first edition of that, which the color is called Dark. And it's kind of a blue gray. This is kind of a warm gray, which is interesting. It's kind of hard to describe in certain lights it almost kind of has like brown tones to it the light in my workshop is very uh very clean and, and consistent but uh, uh yeah kind of kind of hard to describe maybe it shows up but looks real nice okay why isn't the bot oh there we go okay work cloth here. Don't pick that up because it'll fall and be loud. And my polishing cloth. Get my, my fingerprints off of here. God, this board looks so nice. See, in, in this light, it actually looks like a, it looks like a cool gray again instead of a warm gray. Funny. Well, I'll let y'all be the judge of what you think of it. Let me flip this over. Mmm. You would be cool for this. It's actually a clear bottom plate. I think that would be sick. Then you can see the Cruel World. You can see the JST cable. The, yeah, I think that'd be pretty neat. Although, it would show, like, all the dirt and grime that it gets between the two. That is the issue with clear electronics. Is there uh, they're fun for like the first week and then they just look kind of nasty and I imagine the underside of a keyboard would be a pretty uh, heinous environment after a while okay do I want to yeah I'm gonna secure the top and bottom case together first 
and then we'll screw on the new accent plate. So I'm going to use a cross pattern as is typical of assembling stuff like this. Oh, let me check. Are the top and bottom screws the same? I'm willing to bet they are. They appear to be the same. Yep. I'm going to screw together a cross pattern here to ensure I'm applying pressure as evenly as possible across the device. Just like putting on a, the metaphor I always uses a CPU cooler. Uh, that in that case, it's actually for for two reasons because you want to spread your thermal interface material out evenly, um, and make sure that there's even mounting pressure. So that one's twofold. This is just evening out mounting pressure. Ta-da! Great. Let's kind of massage that into place. I think I should be able to tell before I start screwing down the accent plate if that's pinched or not. I imagine it'll be fairly, should be fairly obvious. Um, okay. Accent plates. There you are. I am stoked to see how this carbon fiber And just one more time, because it's very satisfying. Mm. Sound is fun. Okay. Yeah, it is very obvious that that is not seated in there cleanly. I'm sure all the Jane people are screaming right now, because there's some obvious trick to, to doing this. Nope. <laughs> All right, well, if this is the hardest part of the build, pretty easy build. Pretty easy build. Oh, you know what I could do is I could use a piece of capped on tape. I'm an adult. Take that. Got capped on tape. I think this was the smaller driver. Yep, just the big driver for the brass weight. Kind of funny that uh, there's only one. Oh, well, I guess the uh, the daughter board needed a, a 1.5 millimeter driver, though. Kind of funny that they didn't pick screws for the uh, brass weight that have the same drive size. Cool. There you go. Yeah, the carbon fiber was a great choice. I like that little bit of texture and difference on the bottom. All right. That oh, feels so nice too. Kind of satiny almost. Some of them down here. All right. Excellent. Get that way up to the front of the build surface because it is keycap time. Let me zoom out just a little bit more there. Uh, I forget if I said already or not, I'm doing Space Cadet. Yeah, I did talk about that. Doing GMK Space Cadet 2 keycaps with the True Cadet kit because I am no heathen. So I'm gonna keycap up here, and I will be, there's a, there we go, now they're both in frame, and I will be uh, right back with you. decision to go with Space Cadet. This looks awesome. Oh my god, it's heavy. Love that. I went with um, the pointing hands and the hand up up here because I did media keys um, for previous play, pause, and, and next. That's 
cute. Uh, GMK Space Cadet 2 has R5 bottom row, which just look at that. Look at that. I like R4 bottom row, but R5 is uh, is superior. That's just awesome. Mmm. Yeah, pretty stoked on that. I will do, uh, I'll probably do Oblivion uh, during the sound test so you can see kind of the two different uh, vibes available here between those two keycap sets. I like the idea of Oblivion because Oblivion, Obli GMK, Oblivion, version 3.1, monochrome base, quite the mouthful, um, is quite similar to Space Cadet, just with less blue. And I think that'll be uh, a good look on this. I like all the blue. I almost consider the blue space bar. But um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go with with this with the the true cadet uh, bottom rows. Oh, actually, you know what? Maybe Space Cadet Two by default isn't R5. Maybe only the true cadet kit is. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. But uh, there you go. There you go. Well, there there I go. It's my board. <laughs> oh my god, so good. I love the Cruel World branding, the carbon fiber and brass booty. So good. That carbon fiber feels so nice. And uh, I obviously, you know, haven't typed on it a lot yet, but so far I'm digging the, the 60A uh, hardness for the for the gaskets. It's got flex in the middle because polycarbonate, of course it does. Um, but it feels quite rigid when you get up against the, the case. So I'll be interested to try the, the others. And uh, this is a very scuffed preliminary sound test as I make sure my stabilizers haven't uh, haven't betrayed me and I think we're we're in good shape what will follow will be more uh, detailed sound tests um, bouncing between the three different uh, gasket uh, hardnesses again 60a default 40a and 20a were available so I will uh, show off all of those but man that is that is nice I like that a lot the uh, the tagline on the packing tape on the box this came in was cruel world great products and this is in fact a great product in a world that can be pretty cruel sometimes but i hope this has been entertaining for everyone to enjoy like the video if you did subscribe if you loved it and if you have any questions or feedback please leave me a comment i read all of them thanks for watching <laughs>